Hello again, time for another revision video. Got asked about EZ isomers and how you name them. Part of a bigger picture. Here's the big picture. The picture of isomerism. So, talking about organic chemicals, ones with carbon chains. As a result, you get a number of different types of isomerism. Isomers being Everything is the same in terms of the number of carbons, hydrogens, whatever else is present. But you put it together differently. And there are five types of isomer. Most of the time, it's these three. You can see we've got some special guests today. My hens are making a noise out there. I don't know whether you can hear them. And uh, we've also been joined by a fly just before we turn the camera on. So, most of the isomerism is these three, that's where you draw the thing and assemble it all differently. I suppose that's what they all are, but we tend to think of it as these three. So you have they think the same, but you have put the functional group together and have a different functional group to some other way of putting it together. Uh, there are things, lots of examples of that. Alcohols and ethers is one example. Chain isomerism is where you've got five carbons in a chain, then make it four carbons in a chain with a methyl coming off the second one. And things like that that's a chain positional is just it was on the first carbon whatever it was let's say it was a chlorine move it to the second carbon that's a positional isomerism that's often where you begin your isomerism journey stereo isomerism comes in two types this geometric isomerism is the ez and also cis and trans, although cis and trans is not so useful as E and Z in terms of coming up with a unique name for a compound because every organic compound has to have a unique name so it cannot be mistaken and interpreted as something else. The other type is optical isomerism, not for today, but more importantly year 13 rather than year 12 in almost every A-level course I've ever seen. So this is in the course but not today. So we are focusing on geometric isomerism. Now geometric isomerism gives rise to these. It's all down to one feature of carbon-carbon double bonds. So carbon double bond to carbon. Due to the nature of a double bond, sigma bond down the middle, pi orbitals above and below, it cannot twist. And because this Confirmation of two carbons joined by a double bond cannot twist. The positions here, 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 and here, sounding like you want some kind of plane there, those positions cannot swap. So you cannot rotate either end. And so you cannot, if you had something called A and B there for non specific reasons, you cannot rotate A into the B position. So if that was C and D, you cannot rotate A into B and have a different compound. They are fixed. And that means that you get a type of isomerism because of this fixed position. Now I need to prepare the board to do the next bit, so we're going to have a little edit and I'll see you after the edit. So when you look at EZ or cis-trans, you need to think of a... Firstly, you've got to be a carbon-carbon double bond, and you've got to think of it split in two ways. You've got to look at it with a left and right split across my dotted line vertically and then you go down the squiggly line and look above and below. So when you do this what you are doing is making a comparison between those two carbon centres. So you're making a comparison left and right across there. The choice of name is done looking at across the horizontal split above and below. So first thing to do is to find the two carbons that you're doing. That's relatively easy because that's where the double bond is. It's then what you do here that becomes the EZ or even cis-trans naming. Now, not all alkenes do this. The first thing to realise is that if everything is the same around the double bond, ethene, 
E and Z doesn't apply because you only get E and Z when there is the ability to have a difference. Now with ethene, A, B, C and D are all hydrogen. Again, if you have the same thing on one of the carbons, if you had CH3 and CH3, you will not get E or Z because of this position here. It doesn't do anything. So whatever you do over there, this one will stop it being E or Z. It's only when A and B are not the same and C and D are not the same do you get isomerism of the geometric type. I'm going to put some compounds on the board so we'll be back in just a moment. So, four organic compounds on the board. Not one of them has an E or Z isomer. Let's just check why. Here, all the groups, or all the things attached to either of the carbons are exactly the same. So there is no difference between the attachments on the carbon nearest me and there's no difference on the carbon far away. There won't be E or Z. This one here, propene, got a difference on the far one, but because this one is the same, there is no difference between swapping these two over and having a, you won't get a different compound. So this, even though they are different, because these are the same, E or Z doesn't apply, which is just propene. Come to this one here, they're both the same, these are both the same, but not the same as the ones. It doesn't make any difference. It's still not E or Z. Because if you swapped those two over, the compound is absolutely identical. Similarly, if you did the same at that end. Now here, drawn rather than a structural representation, with a displayed representation and then some structural. Here's a skeletal butanine. Butanine, not going to be E or Z. That's because... Those two dots, and I do that when I'm when somebody gives you a skeletal formula. So they say, "What's the molecular formula?" I put dots on to represent hydrogen to make sure I don't miss any. So there's a hydrogen at that position as well. These two are the same, so we're back into this situation where these two are the same, the same as those. E Z doesn't apply, and despite the fact that there's all of those things around there. And that end of the molecule is different because this end is two hydrogens. Swapping those two over doesn't make a different compound, doesn't make a different arrangement, doesn't make a different structure. It is therefore not E or Z. Now we'll move on to ones that are E or Z, but of course you guessed. I'm going to have to wipe the board. See you in a moment. So here we have but2ene. Now if I teach you, you know I always say there's no such thing as but2ene. Because there isn't. There are two butuenes, so therefore that name could apply to either of those, and therefore it can't be its name because it has to ascertain that in the name there's a difference between these two compounds. They are based around the name butuene, definitely, because one, two, three, four, second carbon to the third carbon, which means one, two is where the alkene double group is. Here and here are not the same. Now, when you look down. Obviously, I said to you, you look left and right across the double bond. When you look there, this carbon has got CH3 and a hydrogen. Same at the other end. It's obviously the same on this one as well. So the fact that these two are different and those two on the other end are different means that you now get EZ isomerism because all the other ones before, there was same things at least at one end. So now, that means the two carbons, you have the ability to geometrically isomerize. Isomerize. So we now look down the down the squiggly line and go what's going on. Now there is E and Z which is what I was asked about. Now most A level courses now are kind of backing away from cis and trans. Cis and trans it's kind of it's kind of almost old style naming because it only allows you to do a limited range of compounds and get a name. Once the compounds get a little more complex than this, cis and trans starts to fall, starts to fall down, let you down. So this 
would have the name cis but 2 e this one now cis but 2 e meaning cis means same side now like some people say sisters I don't know so the CH3 if we look at the CH3 the CH3 is that side and the CH3 is the same as on the downside or the underside of the way this is drawn so that makes it cis. I'll do the EZ name in just a moment because this one here where it goes through the bond and out the other side it trans through the double bond is not the same side so that is a different side to this side as you go down the wiggly line that makes it trans. Now you go oh well which one of is cis E or is cis Z? The actual answer to that is they're not necessarily going to come out the same when you get to more complicated molecules. So we're going to focus on the E and Z because almost all A-level questions don't do, e, don't do cis and trans, they do E and Z. So this one, what you then do is you go, all right, it's that side and that's on the same side. So that makes it Z butene. Now how do you remember that? the same side. Some say that's uh, culturally inappropriate, but on the other end, you don't say it out loud. It's only me who said it out loud. You just have to think it. And so the CH3s are on the same side and the hydrogens are on the same side for that matter. That makes it Z in this case. When it gets a little more complicated, we need to do some numbers with uh, atomic numbers, but we'll come to that when they get a bit more complicated in example. So this one will therefore be that E. Now the Z and the E in reality are German words. Now for some people that may be like oh yeah I know that because I do German. For me it's a complete new thing. Uh, the Z stands for Zusammen which means I don't actually know what it means. I have got it written down. Just hold on a second. Uh, I don't know, I didn't write it down. What a disaster that is. No, nope, I haven't got it. And then, so, Zusammen, and this one stands for Entgegen. Entgegen. I oh, see, I'm not German, and I don't do German, which means opposite, apparently, in German. Oh, disaster. That's a bad bit of video there, sorry about that. And uh, so, but in reality, remember it as Z, remember it as E, done. Um, but they do have a derivation from German words. We're going to do some more complicated ones where we need to consider a little bit more about the molecule in order to get the E or the Z prefix correct. And the, t the correct uh, protocol for putting it in, bracket, a capital letter bracketed with a hyphen, which is a little bit uh, against all the rest of the things you do with uh, hyphens between letters and numbers commas between numbers. So we'll come back with some slightly more complex things and uh, I'll see you in a moment. So here's three obviously derived from an alkene molecule. Top one is but2ene again so we need to know whether it's this time E or Z. Well we know already from the previous thing before the edit that that is Z but2ene. Just want to use this. They're called CIP rules, which is named, I guess this is three people. I'm not sure whether that's somebody's name, but anyway, Kahn, Ingold, Prelog are the three, I'm guessing, people, like I said, names associated with these rules. We don't use the full rules at A level. They get massively complicated as you get into 
real world molecules from extracted from the environment, from plants and stuff. But we keep them relatively simple. So why using CIP rules is that Z butte to E? Well, what you have to do is use atomic number. Now some people go, oh, isn't it atomic mass? No, because some elements have the same atomic mass. Also, elements have fractional atomic masses because of the, you know, the uh, isotope variant numbers of isotopes, all the different isotopes, you get fractional atomic masses, so therefore you get different isotopes, got disaster. The one thing that's unique about every element is its atomic number, therefore you won't confuse one element for another because everyone has a unique atomic number, so you use atomic number. That's kind of as far as we need to go. So then you look at this and you go, right, left and right first of all. What is the atomic number of the first thing as you come away from the carbon of the double bond? So as you come out of the double bond there, that carbon is the first thing you meet going up there, which is a six. Carbon has atomic number six. As you come down here, it's hydrogen. Hydrogen is a one. Do that at the other end, it's exactly the same. It's a six and a one. The first thing you come to is a six. The first thing you come to is a one. If the number is the same, we need to consider what to do. Well, we've been joined by a motorbike in the distance now. I've got the window open. Oh, what a bad day for filming. And we'll come to that. That's relevant down here, but we'll come back to that. So when you do this, so you look there and then you go down the, down the squiggly. Is it above or below the squiggly that you find the bigger of the two? And so the six is the bigger, the one is not the bigger, so I won't ring it. And it's the same there, the one there and the six is the bigger. So the six compared to the one, six is bigger, and so both of them are on the, the bigger ones are on the same side. So that will be a Z isomer of whatever the substance is. I'm not going to go into naming all the compounds because that just makes the video longer than it already is going to be. So we'll just go with how do we apportion whether it's going to be E or Z and disregard the rest of the naming thing. So when we come to this one here with three halogens and a hydrogen around the double bond, same thing. Left and right. Are they identical left and right? No. F and CL are different. H and I are different. Going to be E or Z. So we're doing the right thing. Then we look at the squiggle and we go, what's the atomic number? Atomic number of fluorine is 9. Atomic number of chlorine is 17. Atomic number of hydrogen is 1. Atomic number of iodine is 53. I didn't check that. I think that's right. And then you go above and below the squiggly line, which is the bigger one? 17. Above and below the squiggly line at the other end, it's 53. So when you look at that, that one is the same side as that one, so it's going to be Z. It's going to be Z, whatever that name actually is then. When it comes to this one, slightly more to consider. So, when you, come, when you look at this one here, so it's got uh, five carbons in the chain, it's uh, based around a pent-2-in name, but we need to look again. So first thing to do, check that you need E or Z. Are the two things that side different? Yeah, CH3 and F, different. Are the two things here different? Yeah, you've got an ethyl and you've got a methyl. So they are not the same. E or Z applies. Then, above and below the squiggly. Now, this one here, that end, fairly straightforward. Carbon is 6, fluorine is 9, 9 is bigger. Now when we do this one, the we come, first thing we come to there is a carbon, it is 6. First thing we come to is a carbon, it is 6. Ah. So what do we do? Is we then go, what's attached next? So the next thing attached to this carbon is a hydrogen. So it goes from coming out of this carbon, we go to a carbon, then a hydrogen, that's 6 plus 1, which is 7. When you come out of here, you go 6, 
Now you could go to the hydrogen, but you, that's not what the rules say. The rules say you go to the heavier of whatever is attached. So the next thing you look at is the fact that it is attached to another carbon, and therefore 6 plus 6 is 12. So 7 compared to 12, 12 is bigger. So now the 9 is below, the 12 is above, that is going to be E. So I just do a little bit more and then we're done. So just let me get the board ready. I'll see you in a short moment. Now fortunately, I have a knowledgeable camera operator who said, here's something you could tell them. I didn't know this. If you go high, low, high, low, so you go from high to low, high to low, that looks like a Z. Yeah? This one here, high to low, high to low, is again Z-like. Yeah? This one, high to low, high to low, and then that line there makes it an, a, makes it an E. I'd never heard of that before. I think that's very good. I will remember that from when I teach it next time. I'm just going to get the board ready for what I was actually going to do, and I'll see you in a moment. So, a couple more compounds. Another one to go after this, and then we're finished. And at any point, if you think, oh, not sure, don't you just stop the video and rewind it? If you want to go back and look at that whole set of five isomers and think, oh, I didn't know that, go back, rewind it, get a piece of paper out, and write it down. Make your own notes. That's why I'm doing it. So, first one. Look at that there. CH3, 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 H. Vertical line. CH3 and hydrogen, different. CH3, CH3, same. E or Z? Not going to be. You have to check. Don't fall into the trap of it's an alkene, it will be E or Z. Even when it's relatively complicated, well, relatively for A level anyway, you do have to check. Vertical line, they're different, but those are the same. As soon as those are the same, E or Z doesn't apply. Not E or Z. There. So don't have to do that one. This one, a little bit more complex again. This time, E or Z does apply, Br against CH2I. I have written that back to front in some respects because it bonds through the carbon and out to the hydrogen and the RD because of what we're about to do. And here, CH2Cl and CH2CH2Cl. So, those are not the same, those are not the same. E or Z does apply to this one. And then we do what's, what's around the squiggle. So come out of the double bond, first thing you come to there is a carbon, it's a 6. Come out of the double bond's carbon there, first thing you come to is a 6. Then, as you come away from there, what's the next thing you come to? The next thing you come to is a Cl. Cl is 17. So, 6 plus 17, 23. 6, and then, then always picking the big thing, out of them all, the next thing you come to is a C. It is not the CL. The CL is one stage further away. So that CL doesn't come into play, whilst that one does, because 6 plus 6 is 12. 23 is bigger. Decided. You don't need to do the whole side. You don't need to go through the whole sequence of things. You literally just go until you get a difference. Then, that side. BR, 35. Come out of here, 6. Yeah, the next thing on will be 53, but you've already got a difference between 6 and 35. 35. So, the larger of the two is 23, the larger of the two is 35. That is Z. Done. Got one more to go, where something a little bit special comes in. See you in a moment. So, last molecule, 
something a little bit more complex. I have to say I would like to try and name it myself. But we're only here to decide E or Z, so the question is likely to be for something like this. Is it E or Z and isomer and nothing else? So, when you look at that, we've got to make a decision about does it need E or Z? Well, CH2OH is definitely different to, to the Al... This is an aldehyde functional group, if you don't know the names of them yet. This one, methyl against ethyl, they are not the same. So this E or Z does apply. Then we do what's going on around the squiggle. Now, that end, the far end, easy. First thing you come to is a... Six. First thing you come to is a six. Same thing, then go one atom further down the line. Comes to a hydrogen on that one. The bigger of the things attached here is a six. So that's six plus six, that is 12. That is seven. 12 is bigger than seven. That's our choice for that end. When you look at this one, a little bit extra to know. So the first thing you do is when you come out of there, the first thing you come to in both cases is a 6. So we now need to go further down the chain. Out of all of this, this is an alcohol functional group, is the thing that is attached is the oxygen. Oxygen is 8. That makes 14. And the next thing that is attached here is an oxygen. There's a catch. It's a double bonded oxygen. It counts twice. That's 16. 16 plus 6. Twenty-two. So fourteen plays twenty-two. 22 wins. So this would be Z. Double bonds count twice. What do double bonds do? They count. You know, you heard. And that's as complicated as it gets. So there'll be an attached sheet with some things to practice on whether they are E or Z. I think we won't go as far as going, what's the actual name of the compound, because it just makes the whole thing just quicker to learn. You want to do the naming of compounds? That's a different video. I haven't done that one. Thank you for watching. Do bear in mind that CIP, you don't need to remember this. You just go, I call it CIP. In fact, you don't even need to call it CIP. You just go, I know how to do it and I can get an E or a Z correctly. Uh, that's probably as complex as I'd ever see at A-level. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen an A-level question with a double bond in it in the CIP naming thing, but I might not remember. So, that's as far as it goes at A-level. It obviously goes a lot further when you get post-A-level. But there we are. Thank you for watching. I've got another video to do. I'll see you. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.